Landon Ricketts was a former famous gunslinger during the height of the old American West, and stories of his adventures and fights were commonplace during John Marston's childhood. He appeared in many gunfights, including one where he killed the Butcher Brothers in 1896 and the infamous Blackwater Massacre of 1899. The massacre was apparently part of the reason Ricketts chose to move to Tuperosa sometime after a gunfight in Eastern California in 1902 for a more quiet lifestyle. Landon also had a wife who died from unknown causes. As an experienced gunman, he serves the people of the town as an unofficial lawman or vigilante. John first meets Ricketts in Chuparosa after Ricketts witnesses Marson killing three bandits who try to rob him. <laughs> can I see the boots, gringo? I think you can see them from where you're standing just fine, senor. Take off the boots, americano. As you wish. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good indeed, sir. What a great way to improve border relations. An illiterate farmer crossing the river coming into their civilization and butchering the local peasants? <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Don't mention it, old man. You kill peasants, you become a peasant. I never aspired to be anything more. <laughs> a socialist, huh? No wonder you left America. Not many things, most of them bad. But a man of political principles? No. Well, then I fear Mexico may not be for you, sir. Don't you worry about me. Oh, but I do worry. An angry man a long way from home, a man who handles a gun as sloppy as you. I can handle a gun okay, partner. As long as you're killing quail or peasants. But if you have to face another man, you don't stand a chance. And you do? I can show you a few tricks. Come with me. Hold on. What's your name? <laughs> that doesn't matter anymore. And you? I never had a name, mister. I was raised in an orphanage. <laughs> a real American, huh? Wonderful. Just wonderful. Well, you won't make it in the circus, but you can shoot. Keep on practicing. Thank you, old man. Now, who are you? No one interesting. Who are you? Landon Ricketts. Not a name that means much anymore. It means a little. You were famous when I was a boy. Yeah, killing men's a strange kind of fame. I was the fastest in my time. I must have been. I'm the only one left. What are you doing here? Living quietly. Waiting. For what? I don't know. And you? I'm looking for a couple of men. Bill Williamson, Javier Escuela. <sighs> Escuela's from here. It could be. This whole place is teeming with, a, with Americans on the run. Mercenaries, locals hell-bent on revolution. Revolution? Another one? <sighs> yeah. Never really is. This whole place has been a hotbed for revolution since before the Spanish left. Now there's another local guy running around promising the peasants their freedom. Ah, just like the last two or three. Local government? Foul bunch. Colonel Allende, he runs this place like a feudal king. He's an awful individual. Is that so? Yeah. Until someone puts a bullet in his head. Come on, let's get back to it. You gotta keep that back straight. Otherwise, it makes the gun jump. He gives him a Schofield revolver to replace his less powerful Cattleman revolver, and he teaches him the third level of Deadeye by targeting glass bottles, followed by shooting numerous birds in mid-flight. Marston then displays his newly taught skills by accompanying Ricketts in retrieving a wagon stolen from the bank by bandits and by rescuing the hostages. Hey, Senor Ricketts! Senor Ricketts! 
Senor Ricketts, Senor Ricketts, por favor, Senor. Our back wagon's under attack just outside of town. We need your help again. Whoa, slow down, Ramon. We'll take care of it. Thank you, Senor. Again, you are the savior of this town. Well, my friend, are you ready to take a less theoretical exam? Sure. I don't think I ever rode with no savior before. John Marston meets Landon Ricketts later, discussing Emilio Fortuna and his companion about the whereabouts of Javier Escuela, although they are not certain if the Escuela they're talking about is Javier or not. Yo no sé. No. Ag again, I got that. But they do have his sister. Emilio's, I mean. She's a fine young woman, a teacher, a human being, not the clothed vermin so many people seem to have turned into. Tell him I'm sorry. When a man's family is involved, you need a little more enthusiasm than mere apologies. I have enough worries, sir. This man's problems pain me, but they're not quite my own. Those who sit on the fence make a choice in their own way. Don't you think, Mr. Marston? Of course. And what about you, Ricketts? A man living in the past? A man who ran away from home? What choice did you make? I'll tell you what choice I made. I'm a fighter, sir. And I'll fight to the end. I think we should get going. Marston and Ricketts then go on a mission to retrieve Emilio's sister, Luisa Fortuna. They are able to get past the guards with the help of Carlos, a butcher from El Matadoro, who distracts them so Marston and Ricketts can enter. We're here for Luisa. Is she still being held up in the caves? Yes. She's still up there. Who's the cowboy? We're here to help. Mm, muy bien. I can distract the guards. You and the gringo can get inside. Let's do it. The pair of gunslingers shoot their way towards Luisa's cell. Ricketts raise the locked door with dynamite while Marston keeps watch. The two find Luisa barely alive in her cell. Ricketts carries Luisa as he and Marston shoot their way out. They escape on horseback only to be pursued by more Mexican soldiers which are quickly taken care of. They then regroup with Carlos who takes Luisa for medical attention. Thank you for saving me. You're a good man. Friends of the people of this land. Was someone named Harvey Esquela one of the men holding you? No. I don't know. I don't think so. But I remember that name from prison. Bad people spoke of him. I told you, John, he's still in Mexico. Okay, then. I guess we'll keep looking. Uh, yeah. Marston meets Ricketts again at the barn, Chuparosa, where he's playing poker with Andreas Muller, a German silver prospector, and two other Mexican men. Ricketts invites Marston to join them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Mr. Marston. How you keeping, sir? Just fine, thank you. And you? Oh, very well, sir. Thank God my wife died. Unlucky in love, lucky in cars. Cars on. Champagne for everyone. Keep playing, Mr. Ricketts. Oh, I'm sorry, Herr Muller. I'll keep playing you in servitude for the rest of your life on Earth, if that makes you happy. Yes, I shall indeed, sir. Well, then, your deal. <laughs> oh, Marston, would you like to join us? I don't think so. I'm just going to have a drink. Oh, come on. Sit down. Sit down. Okay, then. Gentlemen. Hey. Namakshan! After a couple of hands, Muller accuses Marston of cheating, which Marston denies. Muller gets angry and stands up to pull out his gun, which all of the other four do the same. Muller challenges Marston to a duel, which he accepts. You fucking cheat! Excuse me? You fucking looked in my fucking cards, you fucking cheat! Now, Herr Muller, let's calm down. There must be some mistake. There's no mistake. Your Yankee friend here is a fucking cheat. Easy there, Germany. Calm yourself down. Oh, yeah. You know exactly what you did. Yeah, I know exactly what I did, friend, which was nothing. Now, I'd prefer it if we could all play a friendly game and no one get hurt. You, you planted this guy, Ricketts. Now, why would I do that? I've already beaten you. Now, calm down and let's finish the game. There's no, no more cards game. Ease up there, friend. There must be a name for this. An impasse, sir. An impasse. We could all die here and now. 
I'm not fighting you, Ricketts, but the Yankee him I don't like. He's done you no harm, Muller. He's done me no good either. Outside, winner takes the pot. The winner will take what he wants. The other man will be in no position to argue. While walking to the dueling point, Ricketts gives Marston a few tips on duels. Marston successfully kills Muller, and then he and Ricketts share a drink using Muller's money. Your health. <laughs> you, uh, the man they call Marston, see? <laughs> you like killing? Watch me cut her throat. A few moments later, they are interrupted by a stranger who is threatening to slit a girl's throat with a knife. Ricketts says to be careful as he knows her, but Marston manages to shoot the stranger without harming the girl. Four accomplices arrive who start shooting at Ricketts and Marston. The two of them prevail and part ways. Well, I must say, you tourists certainly bring peace and prosperity to this land. Then again, I doubt Muller will be missed. He wasn't much of a poker player. The two meet once again at the bar in Chuparosa. Marston asks him if he has any further information on Javier Escuela, but Ricketts has none. Marston tells him his history of the gang he used to run in. They share a few drinks as they discuss their lives. Any word of Javier Escuela? Uh, no, nothing yet. Let's see. Why are you after him anyway? We're old friends. We was kind of educated together. <laughs> so what is this, some kind of high school reunion sort of thing? Something like that. Well, well you've killed people. You lived the life. <sighs> that I have. And I tried to stop. I mean, I don't know. I tried to go straight. I did. I left the gang after the gang left me. Left me to die after I'd been shot. They'd all gone crazy anyhow. Our old leader, a fella you probably heard of. Anyway, he more or less lost his mind, went and shot a bunch of people unfair like. I got shot in a robbery. They left me, and I left them. <laughs> well, that's how it goes. <laughs> Already had me a woman, got me a farm, then I got me more trouble. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Been sent to track down the men I used to run with. Track them, kill them. Well, if you don't, someone else will. There's no escape. Look at me, I spent 25 years killing men. <laughs> Look at me now, sitting around here like some low-rent would-be messiah. <laughs> We're relics. Come on, have yourself another drink and let's wallow in a little self-pity. Sounds like a plan. Your health. Luisa enters the bar, pleading for their help as innocent people are being sentenced to death on Colonel Andale's orders without trial, merely for having an opinion. I'm well, sir, but Allende is sending more men to the death. Prisoners who have not been tried. A prominent writer, Castilla and a local official whose only crime was not putting the small holders on the street when they were late with taxes. Writers and government officials. For once, I agree with Allende. Some men need to be killed. Mr. Ricketts! I was just joking. Where are they? Out near Escalera. Let's hang up our self-pity and go shoot ourselves some bad guys. You're gonna be all right. Thank you. Both of you. Ricketts and Marston ambush the convoy of wagons holding the prisoners. They each take control of a wagon, killing the Mexican soldiers who try stopping them. They reach the borderline to America, where they are safe from the army and the prisoners are released. I will handle it from here. I know you got other matters to attend to. It's been nice riding with you, Mr. Ricketts. <laughs> and you too. You took me back to another time. Talk to Louisa. 
She'll help you, and she's well connected in that other land. I hope you find what you're looking for, Marston. You know what I'm looking for. <laughs> if you say so, Marston. If you say so. In the final 1914 issue of the Blackwater Ledger, it is revealed that Lynn and Ricketts passed away quietly in his sleep, a week before the events of Remember My Family. The paper says that he had returned to the United States in 1911, presumably after rescuing the hostage in the Mexican wagon train, after living in Mexico for many years. The paper also stated that with his passing, another piece of the Old West was lost. And in the events of the Undead Nightmare DLC expansion, Ricketts is now living in Casa Mandrigada, apparently single-handedly defending the town from the undead hordes. He will ask John to get some undead bait and some dynamite for him, which he combines to make boom bait, which lures zombies over, then explodes. Do you think I like shooting women, you filthy whoremongering wretch? Gracias, señora, que estaba viendo a mi tía, que tal vez desculpada. Yeah, yeah, get out of here. Go on. Go on, get it. Andale, gracias. Hello, Mr. Ricketts. Hello, John. I see you're enjoying another vacation in our little resort. Something like that? Well, we got sunshine, sand, and a plague that makes people eat each other. Come to think of it, it must feel just like America to you. What is going on? I thought things were calmer in Mexico. This is calm. What's a little light cannibalism among friends? Excuse me. So, how have you been? Good. Well, apart from my wife and son being tied up and trying to rip my soul clean out of my body, <laughs> and the entire earth turning into hell. Good. Real good. You know, John, I've lived a long life. I've seen this land when it was just wilderness and scrub. I've seen missionaries nailed to crosses by shamans and burn into just the cinders of their misguided devotion. I've seen slaves get set free and return to a bondage even more confusing than the one they left behind. I've seen diseases wipe out entire communities in a weekend. I've seen bad men make their own Valhalla out in the bush with harems of maidens and the hunting of men as a sport. I've seen men struggle with principles and morals and the very meaning of existence. I've killed all that can be killed. But I've never, in all my natural born days, seen anything quite like this. Nor me, sir. Now, if uh, we could only get something that uh, would attract these blighters, we could kill them faster and, and maybe return this land to its uh, natural state. Some kind of bait? Exactly. I think I might know how. And more dynamite. I'm running pretty low. Let me see what I can do. Thank you, John. And take care. <laughs> Mr. Ricketts. Hello, sir. How have you been? As you imagine. Good. Did you get the dynamite? Yes. Hmm. And the bait. Huh. Let's see. work with that for a second. Uh, this uh, calls for a soft touch. Not the brutish hands of a man of war, but the delicate touch of an artist. Some uh, use oils, and some a chisel and a block of marble. For me, sir, it uh, 
was always either high explosives or the trigger of a fine iron. But it's much the same. Sometimes your humility overwhelms me, Ricketts. <laughs> you and me both, Mr. Marston. Now, if you'd have seen me when I was a young man, if you'd have seen me when I was so fast, you couldn't see me. Well, then you'd know this is humility. The truth is, well, the truth is long dead. Now we got only memories. Memories and a great swath of demonic mutants, of course. <laughs> Have you heard anything? I heard a man in Chicago was writing a biography of me. And can you believe it? An artist in Pittsburgh painted my portrait. I mean, the demonic hordes. Not your own unending glory. No. <laughs> that. Nothing too interesting. Someone said that there's some really big problems near Escalera. But I can't concern myself too much with that. This is my home now. This, and this up here. Take care of yourself. I will. I don't think getting savaged by some brainless corpse would do too much justice to your myth. <laughs> yeah, I think you're teasing me, Mr. Marston. But I thank you, and I appreciate your concern nonetheless. This is everything we know about the character of Landon Ricketts in Red Dead Redemption. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.